The Portal 5000 is a remote secondary display unit for the Expression MR400 or MR200 host monitor system. The purpose of this video is to review the components of the Portal 5000 system, discuss the main display components, review how to connect the portal to the host monitor, review parameter management, review alarm management and suspend mode. The Portal 5000 consists of three components, the desktop unit, the touchscreen display, and the radio and radio cradle. All three of these components are not MR safe and must remain in the control room. You can mount the portal on the wall or it can be placed on a table surface. There are also optional components for the portal, the strip chart printer, the keyboard, the mouse, and the barcode scanner. The printer, keyboard, mouse, and barcode scanner holder are not MR safe and must remain in the control room. The barcode scanner is MR conditional and it can stay at or outside the 2000 Gauss line. Since there are multiple components, you have to turn both the desktop and display units on. The desktop's power button is on the front of the unit and the display's power button is on the right side of the screen. To turn the system off, turn off both components. Turn the desktop off by pressing the same power button in the front of the unit and turn off the display using the same power button on the right side of the screen. The portal does not retain any patient information. If you turn the system off or if it becomes disconnected from power, any patient information previously entered will be deleted, including patient name, patient ID, or date of birth. When the power is restored, you will have to re-enter the information unless the information is still being displayed on the host monitor. If patient information is still displayed on the host monitor, the information will transfer over to the portal when the portal is powered back on. The portal will retain trend data for 10 minutes after it's powered off. If it's been more than 10 minutes, all of the trend data will clear automatically. If you power the display off, but the desktop is still on, you will still receive audible alarms and you will continue to collect trend data. The main display components include the patient bar, the monitor settings and status bar, the patient monitoring display, and the quick access buttons. The patient bar is at the top of the screen. The patient bar contains any patient information entered, alarm silencing buttons, the patient type and profile, date and time, and trends. The monitor settings and status bar contains the settings gear and the host monitor and channel selection. The battery status of your host monitor is also on the monitor settings and status bar. Most of the screen will be the patient monitoring display that includes the waveforms and vital sign numbers. Quick access buttons are located on the right side of the portal. The portal allows you to adjust the size of the waveforms by spreading your fingers to make the waveforms larger. Pinch your fingers to make the waveform smaller. If you open any menu, you can move it around the entire screen. For the portal to communicate with the host monitor, either the MR400 or the MR200, you must select the correct host monitor and channel. Each host monitor system has two wireless modules. All three of those components must be on the same channel. For example, if your host monitor is the MR400 and channel 4 is selected on the MR400 and the wireless modules, then the portal also must be on channel 4. In order to connect the portal to the host monitor, first select the correct host monitor. In this example, we will select the MR400. Next, identify what channel your host monitor system is on. Here, the MR400 is on channel 4. Finally, select the channel that matches your host monitor system. After you are connected to the host monitor system, the portal will display battery status for the host monitor as well as the battery status of the wireless modules. This will be depicted in hours and minutes. After connecting to the host monitor, if you want to admit a patient, 
Touch Admit. After adding patient information, the button will become Discharge. Admitting a patient and entering patient information is optional. You don't have to admit a patient to use the portal. When you discharge a patient, it will clear all trend data. It's important to confirm that you are using the correct patient type prior to monitoring, as the patient type dictates the default alarm limits and the inflation rate of the blood pressure. By touching trends, you can view previous patient vital signs. You can also view a graphical chart as well. At the bottom of the Trends screen, you can select which parameters you would like to view trends for. The portal allows you to print trends if you have the optional strip chart printer. You can print the current trends page or you can print all the trends currently stored on the portal. In Trends, new NIBP readings are in bold. This allows you to quickly identify new readings. To adjust the settings on the portal, touch Settings. Settings allows you to choose to adjust both monitor settings and system settings. When you touch system settings, you have access to volume control, printer settings, system configuration, service biomed, and administrative settings. The volume control menu allows you to change the alarm volume, pulse volume, and clicking volume on the portal. This will not adjust the volume on the host monitor. This volume adjustment will only control the volume on the portal itself. Printer setting allows you to choose which traces to print when you touch the print button. If you have an optional strip chart printer and you connect it to the portal, you will have to go into the printer settings menu and enable the printer. The printer will come disabled when you first receive the portal, so you will need to access printer settings to enable it. To print, simply touch the print quick access button on the right side. Administrative settings are a new feature for the portal. When you touch Administrative settings, it will prompt you to enter a password. The system requires the password to be updated every 60 days. The portal will tell you it's time to change the password if you try to access Administrative settings and it's been more than 60 days since your last password change. When you enter a password and log into the Administrative settings, you can access Service Utilities, System Settings, and License Information. When you touch monitor settings, you can access menus for parameters, alarm settings, vital sign limits, waveform speed, trend arrows, and volume controls. You can enable or disable a parameter on the main screen by selecting Parameter from Monitor Settings and touching the toggle on or off. To access menu options for specific parameters, touch any displayed parameter box or waveform to open the settings for that parameter. As an example, let's touch into the ECG parameter. From this menu, you can adjust ECG settings. You can also adjust alarm limits for ECG. You can also turn the parameter off from this menu. From the main screen, you can also touch directly on the following labels to adjust certain settings for ECG. ECG lead label, alarm limit, HR source, ECG filter. Similar to ECG, you can change certain NIBP settings directly from the main screen without going into the parameter settings, such as setting the auto BP interval. After setting the interval, use the NIBP quick access button to start the blood pressure cycle. To modify an alarm limit, you can access the alarm limits menu from each parameter menu. You can also touch the Alarm Limits Quick Access button to access alarm limits for all parameters. Select the parameter alarm limit that you would like to change, and then select Low to adjust the lower limit, or High to adjust the upper limit. Use the keypad, arrows, or slider on the right to change the alarm limit, and then touch Save. When you touch the One Touch Alarm button from the Quick Access buttons, the system uses chosen percent values for each vital sign to recalculate all the alarm limits. 
This feature allows you to tailor the alarm limits to the current patient by adjusting all alarm limits around their current vital signs. A confirmation screen will appear once you touch One Touch Alarms. Note, One Touch Alarm adjusts the alarm limits for all parameters. Acknowledge and Audio Pause allow you to manage alarms. Acknowledge disables alarm audio for any alarms that are currently active. The visual alarm indicators remain enabled as long as the alarm condition is active. Alarm audio remains enabled for any new alarms that occur. Audio pause disables alarm audio for all alarms, including any new alarms, until a two-minute timeout period expires or until resume audio is pressed. Touch audio pause to disable alarm audio. Touch resume audio to enable alarm sounds before the timer expires. Suspend mode is useful while doing monitor and patient setup. When you touch Suspend from the Quick Access buttons, audible alarms and auto NIBP inflations are suspended. Note, do not monitor patients in Suspend mode. Doing so results in a loss of audible alarms for critical patient events. When you touch Suspend, an orange bar will appear across the monitor settings and status bar, stating you are in Suspend mode. After five minutes of being in Suspend mode, the portal will provide a reminder that you are still in suspend mode. The quick access suspend button becomes exit suspend when you are in suspend mode. Touch exit suspend to exit suspend mode.